So we're now ready for it. I think we're ready to talk about mass, right? Mass. What is mass? Mass is the amount of, here's my prop again. Mass is the amount, I'm going to eat this clementine afterwards. Mass is the amount of matter in an object, right? This object has the same mass here on the Earth, out in outer space, on the moon. It's the amount of matter in, the, in an object. We measure it, say, in kilograms. Weight, by the way, which is often confused for mass, is the force of gravity on an object. That's why we weigh a different amount less on the moon versus on the Earth. Weight typically is measured in newtons of force. Uh, 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 it's the force of gravity on an object. So we're looking at mass. Now, <laughs> I think that was an interesting discussion, but it kind of doesn't matter because we're going to just go look at our processing sketch and look at a circle on the screen and think, hmm, okay. What's the mass of that object? Oh, that one looks like 0.75 to me, right? So we're just kind of making up numbers for mass. Most likely, it would probably make sense to have mass be tied to the size of something we draw. So the diameter of a circle, the width and height of a rectangle, those might be values we tie to mass. The bigger it is, the more massive it is. We could get into density, which is, you know, if it's not very dense, it's going to have a lower mass, even if it's big. But you know, we don't need to get that far into it. All we want right now is to have objects that seem like bigger and more massive, and some that seem smaller, and to see different accelerations that vary according to that object's mass, which we are ready to do. So, right? Because we, um, did I say this already? I'm confused because I tried this before and I don't know what I'm talking about. But where we are is that we understand that f force, um, sorry, that, that the net force is equal to mass times acceleration or acceleration is equal to the net force divided by mass. So we've been doing that already. The net force gets accumulated into acceleration every frame of animation, every cycle through draw, but we haven't divided by mass. So, um, do you know what's interesting here when you make these videos? I'm realizing that there's something we didn't cover back with the vector videos. I'm going to go back and make a video so by the time you see this it'll have already existed and it's like I went back in time and like solved everyone's problems. But for right now, um, you, you, you need to go back and review the video on static methods in the P vector class. Because something that's very important here is that if a force, let's just look for a second. Let's say we have two objects, m1 dot apply force. It's a little bit of a digression, but I think I'm going to go with it for a moment. Let's say we make up a P vector f, which is some force. Right? And we're going to apply it to two objects. And in a moment, I'm actually going to change our example to have an array of objects so we can at least see a variety of masses. Right? So if we're taking a force and applying it to two objects, let's just say we first wrote this code. Force dot divided by the object's mass. Oh, by the way, we probably should introduce a variable into the mover called mass. And just to be obnoxious, I'll make the mass equal to 1. No, OK. Let's say we make the mass equal to 2. And this force is a new p vector, say, with values 5, 0. Now, if you are familiar with object-oriented programming in Java, you might know that whenever you pass an object into a function, it's the object itself. It's not a copy of that object. So if this object goes in here and gets divided by mass, this force has been effective and divided by mass before it goes into the next mover and gets divided by mass again. No, we want both movers to receive a force with the same value. For those of you who might be new to some of this object-oriented programming stuff, I have this stupid screen on and I keep staring at it. Um, this might be a little bit confusing to you. And so uh, I don't know how to solve that problem right now, but I'm, I, I, when, when I might kind of make some... Um, I'll figure out a way. Another video, an email, you can call me on the phone. I don't like to talk on the phone. It makes me very nervous. But email I'm very comfortable with. OK, but for now, what we want to do is when we pass it into the object, we don't want to actually, when we pass it into this function, we don't want to divide it directly. We want to ensure that we make a copy of it. And the way that we're going to solve that is by using this static version of the divide function. P vector, I'll make a new variable called f, equals p vector dot divide force ah, divided by mass. I kind of ran out of room here. I hope you can see that. We're going to type it out in a moment. So, and then that's what we're going to add into the acceleration. Again, perhaps a little bit confusing, but in a very important detail. If we have multiple objects, when we apply a force to an object, we want it to say like, oh, thank you for that force. 
I, I know that if I mess with this force, I could ruin everything for everybody else. So I'm going to make a copy of it so I can divide it by mass and do stuff that I need to do to calculate how I'm going to move. I don't know what I'm looking at over there. There's a person that I'm talking to. Um, right? So the, we, the object's going to say, it's going to receive this, this, uh, this, the object can receive this vector and make a copy of it so that it can mess with it. And that's what's happening here. We don't, we're actually not making a copy of it, but this force divided by mass makes a new vector. This vector force remains unchanged. So this is a kind of an important detail, but now if we could get, kind of get past that detail for a moment, let's return to the real reason why we're doing this. The reason why we're doing this is to, before we accumulate into acceleration, we divide it by mass. So bigger objects accelerate less. It takes more force to accelerate a larger object. I'm looking for some sort of device here, right? Uh, you know, I have a box, right? This. You know, here's a little force, boom, I accelerate it. Not that much force. If I try to pick up this giant box, right, oh my god, oh, this is a very heavy box, right? I can't, like, oh, it's, it's going to be very hard to accelerate that box, okay. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, I need to go to the gym. Okay, so that was a terrible demonstration. It probably made all sorts of horrible audio, uh, oh, but, you know, whatever. I'm, <laughs> I tried it. Okay, so um, let's go to our code and see what we're going to do next there. Okay. Um, okay, so first thing I want to do before we kind of go forward with this is I think it would be useful to actually, well, first to make an array of these objects. So um, I'm going to do that really quickly. It's a very simple thing. I just want to declare instead of one object, I want to declare an array of movers. I want to make, um, you know, maybe I'm going to start with just five of them. And I need to uh, initialize them uh, with a loop. And then, um, and then what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to make another loop here. And I'm going to use the enhanced loop. You can see this is going to be very exciting. And I'm going to let this run. And we're going to run it. And what's interesting here is that it looks like I only have one, right? So what I did here really, really quickly, and by the way, if you're not familiar with this enhanced loop, it's a really nice loop. For mover m, for every mover m in the array movers, do this to it. So m, it's this nice way, instead of having to count through the loop like I did up here to initialize, I can just say, hey, for every mover m, apply this force, update display. So very quickly, I just declared an array, initialized all of them, and, and, and applied the same action to all of them. So why do we see only one? Well, we didn't do a very good job of making them have any variety. So let me start them all at a random location. And we can see now, look, we have a bunch of movers. When I click the mouse, they're all behaving quite similarly. Um, because they're all experiencing exactly the same force. So what's interesting about this is now we could add mass. So let's go into our mover class. And let's add a variable called mass. Let's initialize mass as something random. I'm going to be really simple about this and just say uh, their values between 1 and 2. And then what I'm going to do is when I draw the circle, I'm going to say uh, mass times uh, 20. So I don't want huge values for mass because remember I'm dividing by mass. So it's going to make all the forces incredibly weak. So I can use some small numbers and then scale up to draw the objects. And when I run this, we can see here, well, we have a bunch of objects with different sizes. But I forgot to actually implement what we did over here. So now I need to actually say, hey, when you get the force, divide by mass. So let's go back over here. And I'm going to go back into the mover class. And in my update, I'm uh, sorry, in my apply force methods, second law with mass, I'm going to say uh, p vector f equals p vector dot divide force divided by mass. And once I have that, I'm going to accumulate that new vector. The new vector that was divided by mass gets accumulated into acceleration. And now when we run this, we're going to see something is going on. Now look, the smaller ones accelerate faster. That's actually correct, right? And you know, there's not that much variety here. So I don't know. I feel like making this just a little bit more varied so we can really see this. That seems, something about this seems off though, right? So we're getting pretty far in that all we did was add mass and divide by mass. And now we have an even more dynamic system where the objects have different accelerations based on how big or small they are. 
but something strange has happened, and and I, I wish I wish I was like a I don't know a prepared physics teacher that like had bowling balls and kind of marbles and stuff. But you might notice, right? If you drop two objects, and if one's really big and one's really small, they fall at the same acceleration. The acceleration due to gravity is not different with different masses. Now, why is that? Am I recording? I am recording. So something interesting, and we're going to get to this in a future video, but the, the, formula, for the, the formula for the force of gravity involves mass. So it actually is, if we want to look at it, this is kind of foreshadowing something we're going to look at in a future video. The force of gravity, the magnitude of the force of gravity is the mass of one object times the mass of another object times something called g divided by distance squared. Incidentally, the mass of one object in our scenario is the Earth. The mass of the other object is that circle bouncing up and down. I'm a little worried the audio is too loud in this video, but I see a bar spiking up, but hopefully it's okay. Um, and so, uh, I lost my train of thought. Um, yeah, but notice something. If, okay, so let's just say, that, here's the thing. I got it, I got it, I got it. Let's just say the mass of Earth is a con the mass of the Earth is a constant in our world. In our G is called the universal gravitational constant. It's got the word constant in it. It's also a constant. Distance, yeah, this is further away from the Earth than this right now, but it's not that much further, and you yeah, might as well consider it the same. That, or the center of the Earth is really far, and certainly if we hold two objects at the same spot, the distance is equal. So we can consider this to be a constant. So really we could say the force of gravity is some big constant times the mass of the object. So if acceleration due to gravity is equal to force divided by mass, right, then we're saying, aha, it's equal to the constant times the mass divided by mass. Oh, so if we're dividing by mass when we get acceleration, we've just got that constant, right? If the magnitude of the force is scaled by mass, and then we're dividing by mass, then the acceleration is constant no matter how much the mass is. So how do we implement that in our code just to simulate gravity accurately? So let's take a look at that. We can kind of apply what might be considered a little bit of a cheat in a way. We can say, look, this is where we're creating the force of gravity. The force of gravity is 0, 0, 0.3, some vector we basically made up. Let's scale it according to the object's mass. So before we apply it to the object, if we scale it according to mass, when we divide it by mass, it won't have even, it's as if it never happened. Let's run this again. Look, all these objects are now falling together. What's interesting about this, and I, I don't know why I feel the need to do this, but I just want to give them a little bit of alpha so it's a little easier to see what's going on. Look at this. They're all falling with the same acceleration, but let's apply wind. Notice now how wind is, of course, not, I have to hold my mouse down here while I talk. Wind is not scaled according to mass, right? A smaller object is going to blow in the wind much more quickly than a larger object is going to be much, is going to accelerate much less. So this is really key to sort of beginning simulation. Now, what are we really simulating again? Like, is the screen like a the, this 2D world and things are falling down and is there, you know, what's going on? It's very weird actually what we're doing, but as from a starting point, this is sort of a useful thing to look at to realize some forces might actually be scaled according to mass like gravity, and some wouldn't be, and their acceleration would then be affected. Okay, so now that we've done this, we kind of got through, this, this video is really just adding mass. So if you've been kind of making something, hopefully, along with all of this, what I would say to you as an exercise is, go and now add mass to your simulation, and see what happens if you can make an array of objects with varying masses. Um, Okay, and in the next, uh, there's two videos, I think there's actually only two videos that we're gonna do left in this section. I probably for, might think of something else, but there's two videos left that we're going to do in this section. We're going to look at um, a, a, a drag force, so air fluid resistance, and then we're going to look at gravitational attraction. Um, we're going to look at two case studies that will actually involve formulas. And then, I don't know, we'll be done for a little while. I could take a break. I've been doing this for like hours now. <laughs> okay, uh, talk to you soon. That's just something I, you say to be polite, right? I mean, but yeah, maybe. Okay, goodbye. Uh, oh, whoops.